everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansberry Research, and I've got Enrique Ebeta on the line from Empire Financial Research. And Enrique, you've got some thoughts and some insights into what it's like to sort of navigate the digital waters as a CEO. Obviously, we're seeing the CrossFit CEO take a lot of flack. He just got let go from his position because of what he said. And we're also seeing the Twitter and Facebook CEOs really have to manage their public images very closely due to the pressure they're under from the administration. Um, what are the implications really, and what kinds of things do you feel like you have to think about as a CEO when you talk about a digital presence? And I guess we should mention too that you're also a CEO of something called Project M Group. You know, look, I think there are two different subjects. Uh, in today's world, we have more communication and direct to consumer and direct to everyone availability. Think about 10 or 15 years ago, what would have been the way that a CEO of Ford could have communicated with a thousand people that he or she did not know and how would that communication make it into the public forum? Um, really no way. I mean, they were, they were either quite insulated. And again, when I, when I say no way, it, it was both insulation that they were protected, but it also took away from them an opportunity to build their brand, uh, you know, their company, etc. cetera. Um, as we all know, today's world is the polar opposite of that. What's your philosophy on whether or not CEOs should weigh in on sort of socially relevant, but somewhat controversial topics? You know, it's, it's like my philosophy on how people should manage their business and or their capital allocation. It really depends both on what is the right choice for your business and what is the right choice for you as an individual. You know, for our brands, we try to do not really say very much politically one way or the other. I'll say it as a little bit different. We try to not actually deal with very much negative stuff. I think that we feel there's enough negativity in the world and we work in music and tattooing and, and all of that. Um, and it's not because we're Pollyannas or we don't think there are things in, in, in society and everything that, that, that don't need to be fixed. It's just we want to keep our message overwhelmingly positive. So we relatively seldom step out to, to make any uh, real messages or to express any of those opinions. But when we do, I think they have an outsized impact. So when we talk about what kind of damage a CEO can do to not only his brand, but the company brand, you look at this guy, Greg Glassman, who sort of had a pretty insensitive and snide and very short remark referring to the George Floyd situation. Um, but he's now, um, he's out of the company. They've lost a lot of business. If this were a publicly traded company, we could obviously see the direct impact on its stock prices in the moment. But um, man, that was a lot to lose over freedom of expression. Well, I mean, he said some dumb stuff. And, uh, you know, when you even get away from the, the, the short snide comment that you mentioned, the Floyd 19 uh, comment was really just the tip of the iceberg. I think what was much more detrimental to him were some of the interactions that he had with his community. Um, you know, and I think he made a bunch of off the cuff remarks. Um, yeah, there was there was more there, to be fair. That's true. Yeah, I think I think that was the real issue for him, uh, much more so. You know, his community, it's not like he's out, out there selling, you know, window windshield replacements. CrossFit is a very community based organization. Essentially, it acts as a cooperative. It's really tied into people's identity and you know, all that. Those are much more politically sensitive areas than if you and I are selling, uh, uh, you know, lawn repair. The last thing I'll add, you know, but let's also give the people, give people a chance to evolve and change. Do you think that CEOs in particular need that extra layer of, hey, what do you think about it if I tweet this? Look, it's just a core business decision. You know, Elon Musk is obviously a popular one on this. I doubt he has anyone managing him on it. And he probably just tells them, you know, don't worry about it. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. And to be frank, I think it's working out pretty well for him. I think as long as he has someone managing his SEC uh, related <laughs> issues, which those are the ones that are truly problematic. Uh, you know, I'm looking at my screen here. Tesla just went through a thousand. So, you know, as a shareholder of Tesla, uh, Elon Musk going out and saying, you know, some of the things that he said, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't criticize. Um, and full disclosure, I'm not a shareholder of Tesla. I've got no position. Um, you know, for other companies, it, it, it really depends. So it's like anything in, in, in business, you have to make individual decisions based on the situation of your company, the personnel involved, and ultimately do the right thing for the shareholders and owners. 
All right, Enrique Beta, giving us some insight onto the challenges of being a CEO in the digital age, our thanks to you. And if you would like to see more content like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram, and it will be straight talk there. Thanks very much for joining us. That's all for now. Thank you.